Welcome to worship on this Christmas Eve. And uh, welcome to, to Augustana, and a warm welcome also to the folk of St. Paul's in Radisson, and the folk at First Saskatchewan in Langham. It's good to have you here, included in our Christmas Eve worship. This is a candlelight service, and so if you wish to extend that candlelight to your home, I would suggest that you press pause and you make sure that you've got your candles all right, ready to be lighted when the time comes. I would also like to thank the many, many people who make it possible for us to worship online. And uh, we'll list all of those people at the end of our video. I invite you to sing along as hearty as you can our beginning song, our beginning hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful.
Please join me in our opening responsive prayer. Hope is here, for, for God, God has come to us. us. Joy is here, for, for we, we have seen God's, God's compassion. compassion. Love is here, for, for the Christ, Christ child is born. born. Let us pray. Tender and precious God, from ancient times the promise of your salvation has sustained your people. With Mary and Joseph, teach us to treasure in our hearts the birth of Jesus. And with shepherd and angels, lead us to praise his holy name. chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join in singing our gospel acclamation, Angels We Have Heard on High.
Our Christmas Gospel from Luke, chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Please join me in singing, Love Has Come.
creches. I'm a collector of creches. You know those, the little manger scenes. Uh, two of my manger scenes are in an eggshell, one from a brief stop in Peru, and the other was made by a very dear person. I have a creche that is made out of grass. I have another one that glows in the dark. I have one that a traveler brought back from New Zealand, and another small one of porcelain from France. Some of my creches are beautiful, and some are kind of tacky, really, especially that glow-in-the-dark one. My first creche came to me as damaged goods. I was just a teenager when I bought it, and it was on sale, of course. It was missing the stable part, which had gotten broken in transit from the Holy Land. And a friend worked at the bookstore and showed it to me, and I loved it, even without the stable to hold all the figures. At the time, I had no idea how important that crush would become in the years to come. Every year, I have set it up for many, many decades. And for, from the time that our children were toddlers, I've set up Bethlehem in one part of our living room and put Mary and Joseph on the other side of the room because, of course, they were on their way to Bethlehem. And at the beginning of Advent, their journey began. Every day, one of the girls got to move Mary and Joseph just a little bit closer to Bethlehem until finally, when we came home on Christmas Eve, we moved Mary and Joseph to the manger, and I brought out the baby Jesus and put him in the manger as well. Their journey was complete. The first crèche, it is said, was created by St. Francis of Assisi a few years before he died. He got the idea of celebrating the birth of the Christ child by reenacting the story in a stable. He used real people and animals in a real stable. He wanted to see as much as possible with my own body's eyes. And it apparently was such a moving experience that people began to look for a way to be part of the celebration of Christmas. And so we have precious in many different forms and sizes, all to help us experience the Christmas story with our own body. So when my children moved the figures of our creche around, they experienced the Christmas story in a more complete way than to just hear the story. So I guess our children were on the same wavelength as St. Francis. They wanted to know the Christmas story with their whole body. And I think that must also be my attraction to a creche. My interest in manger scenes goes way back. Where I grew up in Calgary, there was a Roman Catholic church that we passed on the way home, um, Our Lady of Perpetual Help. And every year, they had a life-size outdoor crash. I remember it very clearly because I found it so very disturbing. The baby Jesus was grossly underdressed for winter. Every time we drove by, it worried me, even though I really knew it wasn't a real life baby. But it, it actually still bothers me, these outdoor crushes where the baby's not dressed warm enough. So, I have brought a warm blanket to wrap up the doll who is helping us remember and celebrate Jesus' birth. Uh, but, but first, there are a few things about Christmas that I would kind of like to clear up and get rid of, just kind of to, to set things straight and to do things right. So there are some of the things that I would like to get rid of in Christmas. I would like to get rid of the busyness and the 
rushing about, just get rid of it. And, and also, there is so much commercialism and greed in Christmas that I, uh, we got to get rid of it too. Um, well, there's also this excess of food and drink. Oh, it's so rich. It's really not good for us. Let's get rid of it too. But also at Christmas time, in the middle of winter, it's highlighted that there is far too much poverty in our world. Poverty and homelessness. We, we gotta get rid of that. There we go, get rid of that. And I also think in our world where we have in excess of 7 million, 70 million, Far too many people who are refugees who are looking for a safe place to live. We gotta get rid of that too. I think also of oh, especially this Christmas because it's such a weird year. There is loneliness. People who are shut in or even feeling like they're imprisoned in their own home. We, we gotta get rid of that. Well, there's one more thing that really bothers me about Christmas. And, and that is, there are so many romantic and sentimental things about Christmas that I guess they're kind of fun. But, you know, sometimes they take away from the real message of Christmas. And I think, let's get rid of that. Oh, dear. There's not much left to wrap up the baby. I, oh, I guess that's not going to work. So how am I going to keep this baby warm and, and covered? But as much as there are so many things that I've seen in Christmas that really, really bother me, there are some things about Christmas especially this year, that I have noticed. In the midst of a pandemic, there have been people willing to share of what they have. I think of the, the Salvation Army that usually has kettles out and worrying about if they would get enough donations to carry on. And I, I believe they have. And I think also, of the hampers that our church does every year. I wasn't sure that we would be able to do them this year, but people have been very generous, and we've been able to do that. And where, where I live, across the street, there is a couple who are very, very isolated. And I noticed the other day that someone came and stood out the door, outside the door, they, put a package down outside the door, and then they stayed outside and they visited from outside. And I thought, that, that was so special. That was wonderful. And I also remember that this Advent season, every time a need has come to my attention and I brought it, to the congregation or to people in the congregation, always, always, there's been a speedy response. I, I can take care of that. I can do that. And that, that has just been wonderful. And I think of all of the people, the non-techie people who are learning to be techie people. It just, it just amazes me. And I remember also all of the phone calls and letter writing and emails that have happened. All of those special things. The video calls that have been shared. And I think our doll, who is helping us remember the baby Jesus, is wrapped up in just bits and pieces, but wrapped up 
warmly, safely. And I am reminded that Mary wrapped her baby up in bands of swaddling clothes. And when the shepherds came to find the baby, they found the baby that was wrapped up in bits and pieces. And that's how we live out our Christmas. That's how we live out the gift of this precious child and our faith in bits and pieces. God bless the bits and pieces of this Christmas as you find the bits and pieces in your own life that seek to honor and to celebrate Christmas as it should be celebrated. Amen. We begin our time of offering in singing, O Little Town.
In other years, this would be the time when we would be passing an offering plate down the pew. But instead, this year, we have an opportunity to think about a different kind of offering. What is it that you have to offer to the glory of God? What gifts and abilities are yours to offer? What of your heart and mind and soul do you have to offer for love of God and love of neighbor? Uh, we, tonight we have an offering of music to give us some time to reflect or to ponder that this night. Let us pray. In the stillness of this night, we give you thanks, O oh God, for bringing us to Bethlehem. We thank you for the precious gift that came to us, wrapped in swaddling clothes. May this be a gift we share with all creation. Amen. Our 
candles are lit, and I invite you to take time to light the candles in your own home. The Gospel of the Incarnation from the Gospel of St. John in chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What is come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth.
gospel, let us ask God for a good Christmas. That no powerful nation should tax the poor or uproot them. That no married mother should be put away in disgrace. That no door will be shut on those who need to find it open. That shepherd and sheep and all creation need not be afraid that wise men and wise women might appear in all those places in our world where they are needed. That children may be protected from those who would abuse them. That this Christmas, worship may become a manger and the rumor become a reality. That Christ has come among us. This we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Receive God's blessing. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, and the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, and the determination of the Magi, and most especially the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Please join in our sending him joy to the world. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be to God.